Hey boys and girls, my name is Kent. Today, I worked about eight hours putting together my electric bicycle. Well, this is my wife's electric bicycle, actually. I still gotta put that one together. Spent about eight hours putting the battery and the motor and the crank and the crank guard, re-putting the chain on. Adjusting the front brake, putting a new brake lever on. It has a cutoff here to when you pull it, it cuts the engine off. There's the computer. This is the throttle, it's a thumb throttle. It came with two brake levers, but because my bike has a two-in-one brake lever and shifter, then I can't put on the right brake lever, the back brake lever, until I get a separate shifter for this. So right now it just has engine cut off on the front brake, not on the back brake. This is a 8 Fun Bafang BBSO2 second version. This is the 9 FET version, so it has 9 FETs instead of, I believe, 6. It was the previous BBSO2, but this 9 FET version can handle more heat, um, get through the heat better because it has 9 FETs instead of 6. Um, back here, attached a little magnet to monitor the speed. Lots of wires and cables wrapped around here. So this is my wife's. This is a small frame. This is a 2015 Giant ATX, 27.5 inch wheels. It's got a 48 volt, 10 amp hour battery that puts out 30 amps continuous, which effectively makes this like a Watt motor. It's a 750 watt motor, but it can accept 26 amps continuously. So whatever 26 times 48 is, that's how many watts I'm going to pull out of this motor. I have not started it up yet. This is the moment of truth. Power on the battery. It locks off, so you have to use a key to get it off and on this frame. Power on the system. See if it works. Doesn't work. Shiitake. Of course not. <gasps> oh, I had to hold down the power button <laughs> for a few seconds. I'll go ahead and peel this off of here. Ooh, shiny, pretty. I think you go to advanced settings, you hold down the plus and the minus together. Got a clock on it. It's got up to nine pedal assist modes of assist. Each one gives you more and more power. Out of the box, there's only three, but you can set it up to be like nine different increments. So three is full power, and nine would be full power if you set up nine. Um, it's kind of like three gears in a way. When you put it in pedal assist mode zero, nothing happens and you just ride it like a normal bike, or you can just turn it off and ride it like a normal bike. One thing I noticed is that there is some resistance on the motor, but when you pedal it forward, it's a little bit harder to pedal forward than a normal bike. It seems like there's some motor resistance happening, um, which I didn't really expect. It's not very, it's not that much harder to pedal, but it is, it is a little bit harder to pedal. So this motor just kind of hangs here and hopefully it doesn't fall down here. So I tightened it real tight. These two bolts. So I had to take off the gear shifter that was here, the front shifter, and the three gears. So now this is only one gear here. So I went from being a three gears up front to being one gear up front, and there's seven gears in the back, so it's now only a seven speed. And So I went from being a 21 speed to a seven speed. But what's cool about this mid-drive system is I can still use the gears for the motor to go up hills to make it easy for the motor to go up hills and, and whatnot. And whatnot. To buy a good electric bike is a lot of money, and I knew I could build one that was better for cheaper by doing the research anyways. Let's go for a ride. Ooh. <laughs> Already when I pedal it, kicks in. So that's interesting. There we go, uphill. Using the electric bike. First time ever, it's rolling good. Here's my throttle. Ooh. Really gets moving. Let's just one. Let's see how fast we can get going here. So 
looks like we're picking out at about 16 miles an hour. So let's go ahead and move it up to pedal assist two. Now we're going downhill though, so it's going to be a little different. But <laughs> it takes off about, throws me off of the bike every time. It's pretty fun. So now I'm going down the hill. So I guess the mile per hour thing doesn't quite work because I don't remember setting up the wheel size properly. It's pretty fun though, it really gets up and goes. It throws me off. Jerky. Torque. Success! Can't even tell you how many hours I spent researching this and looking for bikes that would work with the right size bottom bracket and a big enough triangle for the battery. And I didn't want any cables on the bottom underneath here because I wanted it to be flush against the frame as much as possible so I didn't want any cables running on the bottom of the bike. I probably spent more time shopping than I did doing research on it. But So it looks like this uh, screen has backlighting. It lights up like an Indiglo watch. Eight levels of brightness. You probably can't really see it here in the bright garage. But it looks like we've got a total miles and a trip miles just like your car. Well, I guess that's my battery gauge. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm just gonna try to ride it like a normal bike and see how it feels like a normal bike. Well, it rides like a regular mountain bike. Let's turn it on. We'll crank it up to pedal assist three. Wow. Still haven't figured out the wheel size thing, but let's see how fast we can get going up this hill and pedal assist three. First time I've had pedal assist. It's just scaring me. I'm not expecting it. I'm gonna have to hack this thing. Pretty quiet too. Can barely tell it has a motor. <laughs> I'm gonna wipe out on this thing. All right. First time riding it with a recording it. Woohoo! Definitely get more, more power. So I'm, I'm pleasantly happy. I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, it's pretty quick. I'm not that much of a fan of the. Of the pedal assist mode. Maybe I'll get used to it. I've had two motorcycles in the past. All right, so I'm gonna try to set the wheel size properly now. Okay, so what you gotta do is you gotta go into the settings mode by holding the plus and the minus, and then once you're in the settings mode, you gotta hold down the plus and minus, and while you're holding the plus and minus down, hit the power button eight times, and then you get to the other settings, which allow you to change your wheel size and do some other crazy stuff. Okay, unfortunately, the Bafang computer doesn't have a 27 tire size. They've got a 26, a 700C, and a 28, and a 29, and a 30, and they go from like 8 inch up to like 31 inches or something, but there's no 27. Anyways, I just measured my tire and it's only 20, really just barely over 27 inches, which is like 14 millimeters short of a 700C. 700 millimeter tire so that's about as close as I can get I guess is setting it to 700 C so the speedom the speedometer is not going to be 100% accurate so I would really like to be able to throttle without pedal assist so then I could always change gears without worrying about the motor cranking in and grinding my gears because that's what happens with this type of system. Um, Got to be careful to not grind your gears when the motor kicks in. That's why it would be nice to have throttle only then you could just pedal to change the gears. There are hacks to do this and I'm going to have to order a USB thing with wires sticking out of it and, and some software, download some software and basically hack this so I can have in mode zero, I, I can have just throttle with no pedal assist. It can be done. Now what you need, what you should do is you should pull a little bit like a clutch and hopefully that'll activate the engine cutoff without activating the brakes when you're changing gears. It's not as easy as just throttling and changing gears without having to pull this every time. I also already missed not having an engine cutoff brake lever on this, on this side because the engine likes to go when I'm just leveling the pedals and I'm like, no, I want to break, and then I'm fighting the engine. Anyways, time to go ride. Time to go test it out. All right, I just went 29 miles an hour 
up a slight incline. You can set it so it doesn't go faster than a certain a certain mile per hour to keep it like street legal, to keep it under 20 in the US. Okay, that time I can only go 29 down a slight hill. My hair is getting wind blown. I got a blow job. I can pedal faster than I got up to going about 34 miles an hour. So I can pedal and make it go faster than 30, but I haven't been able to make it go faster than 30 using the motor. Okay, it weighs in at 49.2 pounds. I think the battery and the engine together added about 17 pounds to it. 16.6 pounds if you want to get technical. All right, this one should go a lot faster because I know what I'm doing. I did have to run to the store and get some tools that I didn't have. This engine didn't come with any zip ties. So you need zip ties. It also didn't come with any tools. I would have had to get a bottom bra couple bottom bracket tools, but I had bought these bikes new and I had the bike shop take off the bottom bracket for me. And they did it free of charge. One tool that you do need to get, you just need to get a tool like this. And a tool like this, this is a like all-in-one, it came for like four dollars off of Amazon, I'll try to put the link in below. This will grip the lock nut and then this one takes off, tightens up the, the inner nut that the lock nut goes on top of when you're tightening. This is just a plastic chain guard. Next I'm going to take off this front derailleur. This is the hardest part, taking this grip off. Now that you've dislocated your shoulder, there's some teeth on this that grip it. Enjoy my butt crack. It pulled that up there, and this piece here is supposed to go over the top of it. Okay, looks like it's gonna go over the top. This thing has a few teeth, it grips the outer edge of the bottom bracket. I guess it helps the uh, engine from sliding down. This thing barely fits on there. It's so dumb. You have to hold it while you turn it. <clears throat> Using an open my underwear for a rag. <clears throat> I guess it's on there tight now. As you can see, it scratches it all up. Pedals. The right pedal goes on clockwise, tightens it, counterclockwise loosens it, but the left pedal is the opposite. The left pedal you turn counterclockwise to tighten it. The battery was interesting. Getting the battery. Originally I was trying to get it from AliExpress. So I tried to order it and then AliExpress wouldn't let me order it saying it wasn't in stock. Then I contacted the store that had this battery. They said they could send it directly to me if I paid them directly through PayPal. So I was a little nervous giving them all this money. $840 for two batteries. $420 a pop, which is like $100 cheaper per battery than this web website I found it on. EM3 or something? But I went ahead and did it. I realized that I cared more about speed than I did about distance. Well, in order to get speed, you're going to lose amp hours. In order to gain amps, you're going to lose amp hours. Amp hours is the length, the time the battery lasts. Amps is like the current that pushes through. So even though I've only got a 10 amp hour battery, I'm still able to get... Because I'm using... Samsung 25 cells instead of 29 E cells. I had them build me better with 25s, which don't have the amp hours, but they can put out more current than the 29 E's. So I'm still able to get a battery that puts out continuous 30 amps of current, just like the big old one. It just won't last as long. So if I would have got this shape of battery with a 20 the 29 E's, it would have lasted longer, but it wouldn't have been able to put out 30 amps max continuous current. It would have been more like 20 amps maximum current or something like that. So 
I think I got about as fast as battery, or as powerful as battery put out. You put out the most amps for the size. So I guess it doesn't matter how, f up, how far up or down it is on the spoke. The instructions didn't say anything about, about that. They just said it has to be less than five millimeters away from the magnet, so. If you want to get as much speed out of the motor as possible, as much power out of the motor as possible, then you want to make sure to get a battery that at least puts out 26 amps continuous. 20 miles an hour is the legal speed limit in the United States on flat land without pedaling. So a lot of the websites will tell you that this engine fits on a 73 wide bottom bracket as well as a 68mm bottom bracket. If you put it on a 73 then you won't be able to fit this outer lock nut on. You'll only be able to fit the inner one on. Also you'll need a bunch of washers that don't come with. You'll have to find a bunch of little washers to like stick in here to allow this to be level with the frame. These brake levers aren't quite as good as the cheapy brake levers that came on this bike. So I read online that the Bafang has four millimeter bullets. These white ones are coming from the Bafang. Four millimeter bullet power connectors. So that's what I told the, bat the battery manufacturers. But they seem a little small, so perhaps they're five millimeter bullet connectors. Yeah, I just opened it up a little bit, spread it apart. I just kind of used a nail and wedged it in there and opened it up. It's hard to see, so close. Okay, this one only took me two and a half hours to get put together. I guess I still have some stickers to remove and I still have to put some electric tape over the connections where the battery powers the engine. My cat wants me to go inside. Okay, let's see if it works. Trooper quit! We have liftoff. And the motor's working. It's pretty cool, it's got a button you push here and then if you hold it, it tells you how full your battery is. I guess if these green lights go off, then your battery is losing its charge. And this pulls out and this you can charge your phone with. This little USB port right here. I guess I will order that USB dongle thing and try to hack my thing so I can make it go... <laughs> my cat. It's like, what are you doing in the garage? You're not supposed to be in the garage all day. <laughs> okay, bye. Let's go ride.